let's now look at arrays again and see the differences to pointers and the similarities. First, let's have a look at our array y, which stores the values 2, 5, and 21, and y is of type integer. Note that here we haven't given the compiler the number of elements in the bracket notation because it knows that this is initialized with 2, 5, and 21, so it knows it's three elements. Next, assume we have a, another variable called index of type integer, and now we know how to access the values of y by saying, for example, on the left hand side y and position index shall be 5, and also on the right hand side we can use y and position index, which means we get this value of the, whatever is stored on this index and then assign it, for instance, to x. Now let's have a look how this looks like in memory. So first of all, the array y is to be stored in three integers. We know an integer has a size of four bytes, so th what the compiler needs to do, it needs to assign a memory location and then basically stores the three values, 2, 5, and 21. So here we go at address 4000. In this example, we have at value 2, then 4004, 5, and 4,821. Alright, so and y implicitly means the first address and the first value of this address of this array. Okay, so we, we y basically points to address 4,000. Note that the array in this case is not explicitly stored to be a pointer, so y is not necessarily stored as a pointer. So the compiler knows at compile time that y will be assigned a memory location for 1000, in this example. So it will remember this, and it does not need to have another variable called y somewhere, like we remember here in this case when we had a pointer, which contains the value of 4000. No, it doesn't need that. It just stores in its symbol table directly the information that y corresponds to this address 4000. So when we now access, in fact, a value using this notation, the index notation here, um, what will happen is that in under the hood we have uh, basically pointer mathematics. So this code here, basically at index 1, means take whatever y points to, y points to address 4000, right, and take the first element of it, which means, in you know, we take y plus 1, which makes 4000 plus 4, because y is of type integer. Okay, um, in this case, the compiler knows that y basically represents this memory address to the first element. So, if you take the address of y, it is equivalent to be um, the same as y itself. Okay, because y is not really like I said, a pointer. It's just internally treated like a pointer, okay? This is a slight distinction that maybe you find very confusing um, at first, but, you know, always remember what a pointer is. A pointer is an object that stores a memory address, while an array basically is, I would say, a virtual object that exists on our stack and the compiler knows where this object starts and so it does not need to save the memory address explicitly. Right, um, so an array is uh, a serialized sequence of our object. So if I have an array of 10 elements, you know, basically on my stack I find 10, on 10 consecutive memory addresses, these objects serialized. And our array starts at this address that is contained in this array variable on our symbol table. And, um, you know, this object does not need extra space anywhere because it is stored in the symbol table. So let's have a little look about indirect pointers in main memory, particularly a 2D array. And this will, I think, clarify the, the difference between those two objects. So let's take first two variables, row 1 and row 2. Row 1 is an array of type integer, row 2 is an array of type integer, and here we have three values. Let's have a look how those objects are stored. Row 1 is somewhere allocated on our stack, 
and we have three values. Um, right, so 2, 5 and 21, this is row 1, in fact, um, are stored on these three addresses and then we have the other variable stored on three other addresses, right? There could be a big gap between those, that doesn't matter, but what matters is that each array itself is stored as a consecutive series of memory addresses with their values. Now we take dp, this is now an array of two elements, but I store in this array two pointers. Okay, so dp is an array with pointing two integers. Okay, so in this array I store the memory address of row 1 and the memory address of row 2 using our address of operator. And you remember actually this address of operator in this example is really um, optional. I could remove it because, as I said here, the compiler knows that this address of y is identical to y itself and both are stored on the symbol table. All right? So this is optional but I do it for clarity. So let's have a look how this looks like. Well, as it is an array, we have somewhere two memory locations again. Right now, on a 64-bit machine, um, the, a data type of a pointer is 64-bit long. So we have eight bytes for each of these memory addresses. And in the first pointer, we store the address of row 1. Well, where is it? Well, it's here on 2100 and an address 4000 is our row 2, so we store those two values. So you can see there are two differences here compared to a 2D array where I would remove the star notation and just add another bracket 2 again. I have here two pointers explicitly stored. And these pointers they are not managed by the compiler so I can change them and then can use this trick to create record arrays so that means arrays that like a 2D array in which not every row has the same number of elements. You can use this for example to store a triangular matrix and stuff like this. So this is a very nice example, I think.